that you are here with us on our very first podcast. I just wanted you to know as a few announcements. One, there will be probably no gatherings here in our sanctuary until at least the middle to the end of April. So stay home and stay quiet and stay safe. But we do want you to continue to interact with one another. Phone calls, those types of things. We need to do that. And also, as I mentioned in our letter out, um, I, I hope that you will drop off uh, some thinking of you cards that we can distribute to the nursing homes. Just sign them with your name and your friends at First Christian Church. And I think we'll touch a lot of hearts that way, and that's what God wants us to do. And I also want you to also know that I am available if you need me 24 hours a day. You know how to get a hold of me, either leaving a message here at the church or give me a call on my cell phone. So I look forward to helping you. I look forward to us being safe in the future. So having said that, let us be in prayer. From near and far you have called us and you have sought us out. You've brought us out of darkness into light, and with you we are able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We who were dead have been brought to life. We who were blind, we now see. Dear Heavenly Father, we hold up on you and you alone. You are our God. You are our life. You are our creator. We're here to praise you and worship you. We thank you and we love you. We dearly love you. We also thank you for our daily needs. The food that we need to put on our tables to nourish us, but also the, the strength that you give us day by day to go on through good times as well as bad. There are always times that we need because of the way our minds work that we need forgiveness. We ask that you forgive us, dear Lord, but we also ask that we have the strength that we can forgive those around us too. We are to love one another, and we understand that. But sometimes it's awful hard to show forgiveness. Open our hearts and open our minds to that, dear Lord, and we thank you for that. There are so many people that we need to pray for also. We pray for those that are affected with the, with the virus that is going around the world. We, we also pray for those who are working to stop the spread and to find a cure. We, we pray, dear Lord, for the military that is helping us. Um, we, we pray for our state and our city and our national officials that are trying to guide us through these dark, dark times of our times. There are so many things that we are grateful for, but there are so many things that are blessed, but there are also so many things that are heavy in our hearts. We know those things, dear Lord, so as we bow our heads for these next few seconds, please hear our silent prayers of those that we know need your comfort and guidance. We raise again thanks to you, dear Lord. We, we thank you for our, fan, our friends. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our church. We thank you for all of the gracious love that you give us. And we thank you most assuredly for your son Jesus. For your son Jesus came and he showed us how to live. And he also showed us how to pray. And he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A man blind from birth. I have been blind since birth. It is said in the law that such infirmities as mine are God's punishment for my sins or the sins of my parents. My whole life I have known nothing but darkness, begging, insults, and shame. One day while, I, while begging, I heard a couple of strangers asking about me and why I was blind. Their rabbi the one called Jesus, said it was neither my fault or my parents' fault. 
but the work of God. I wait for God to use me so others may see his greatness and glory. Then Jesus spat on the ground, made some mud, spread it on my eyes, then told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash it off. A friend of mine helped me to the pool, and as I washed off the mud, I began to see. For the very first time in my life, I saw water, earth, sky, houses, people, the light. Then I remembered Jesus' words. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Later, Jesus came to me and asked if I believed in the Son of Man. I said, show me who he is so I may worship him. And Jesus said, I am he. I now follow him, my Lord and Savior. As I extinguish this fourth candle, may the darkness of, the, of a hopeless life be replaced with the light of the world. interpreted was actually our gospel lesson for today, which is John 9, verses 1 through 41. I will not read them all, but there were some very interesting things in there, so I, I hope that you all will go back and um, pick up and reread 1 through 41. Um, there's some very, very good words in that, too, but there's so many intricate parts of this. There's seven or eight different parts. Um, what I'd like to do is just look at a couple of them. For one, the disciples looked at the blind man and said, what did he do wrong? Or what did his parents do wrong? And Jesus said, nothing. He happens to be blind. And God will be able to use that for his glory. That's quite a line. It's a beautiful line. But then, his neighbors, they don't see who he is. They think he's someone else. Um, nobody really wants to believe that this blind man now sees. Even his parents, when they're confronted by the Pharisees, the Pharisees don't want to hear it. All the Pharisees want to do is think in terms of, he broke the Sabbath. And they were prepared to throw the parents out if they didn't say that Jesus was somebody other than a prophet or a good man. It's really funny. When we go through this whole thing, all of the people in this story are blind. Not physically blind, but they're blind. Blind to what's going on around them. They just don't see, you see. And I hate to say this, but they are each and every one of us. We are all blinded by something. At least the blind man who got his sight back knew that he had been blind. You see, how we see others, how we see ourselves, and how we see the world is how we see. We need to have our own eyes opened by Jesus and allowing our inner self to be able to see. That's the whole purpose of this, uh, of this whole story. That we can see, but many times we don't understand and see. We need to see God. We need to see people. We need to see things, circumstances, as they truly are, not just as we think they are. So you see, if we want to see God, and if we want to see truly life, we, we need to honestly look inside of ourselves. We need to look into our hearts, not our eyes. We need to see the fears we need to see attachments. We need to see beliefs that live in us and how they can cloud and how they can block our vision. The things that affect us are very simple. Attachments. What are attachments? They're things that we have that we think make us happy. The 
those could be cars, houses, jobs, your status in the community. We can't even imagine living without many of those. And our very existence, in our hearts anyways, I think, shows us that we, we depend on them so much, right? You see, the Bible, though, calls those idols. We love our attachments, and we turn our blind eyes to anything that may threaten them. Another something that affects our sight are our beliefs. It's good to have beliefs, don't, don't get me wrong here, but have you ever met someone whose beliefs are so strong that they can't even see past what their belief is? There, there is no way that you can show a, a different point of view. There's no other possibility, no way but my way. We've all met people that way. Maybe we look in the mirror today and we'll see that same person in ourselves. Often that person is us. We turn a blind eye to anything but the world that we have created. But then the third thing that really does sometimes make us blind are our fears. Our stresses that come out of these fears. Or the stress that allows us to go deep into fear. Have you ever been scared? Have you ever been really scared? Maybe you've just been uh, told that you have cancer. Maybe you know that your job is ready to be taken out from under you. Maybe you're afraid that you might get this virus that is now threatening our nation as well as the world. You know, fear has a way of blinding us. It rivets rivets us. We lose sight to every other thing around us, and we can only dwell on that. As you see, that's wrong. That's wrong. Our scripture today, though it's about, is really and truly about hope. It's hope for us. It's overcoming fears. You see, the, 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 the parents were afraid they were going to be thrown out of the church. The neighbors were afraid that maybe this person, they didn't want the status quo to be changed, you see. He was always blind. He should stay blind. We can't answer it. And then even the Pharisee, they were afraid that their laws were going to be, um, that, that they were going to be overturned. Everybody had fear in that. Can you imagine what the poor man was who got his sight back? We need to acknowledge that we are all blinded by things, by beliefs, and by fear. But you see, with the knowledge of Jesus, he allows us to see. We need to allow Jesus into our lives. We need to allow Jesus to put a salve on our eyes, if you will. And then we need Jesus to ask us to go and wash that away. And then because of the washing, We'll see, because he and his spirit will then reside in our hearts. I don't know about you, but it's pretty scary out there right now. I'm glad you're home. I'm glad you're watching. But I also want you to pray for those around us. I want you to call people, because your eyes are open, you see. Because you are part of this congregation, and you love one another, you be with one another. And we have concerns for the rest in the world. Jesus has opened our eyes. Let us also in turn open the eyes of others. May we pray. God of all hope, open our eyes to your joy and to your peace as we trust in you despite all of life's circumstances. Our closing hymn, I think, is very appropriate that um, Brian and I will sing Amazing Grace because of the one line that comes directly from this scripture. I once was lost, but now I'm found.
Go into the world without fear, walking in the path of God, walking in the way of the cross, walking with the light, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day.